This is Launching Your Daughter Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Burgess, Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Now, here is today's episode. Episode 39. Today's episode is a little different than some of my past ones. I talk with Shantae today and we explore her work regarding herbal medicine. And it's more of an alternative way to oh, get to know yourself better and ways to really reconnect with all parts of yourself. So I'm very excited to share this conversation with you today. I also want to give a big shout out to all the listeners out there, parents, therapists, and how I continue to hear from the moms about what it is they're looking for and how I can best support you all in this podcast. So again, I just want to say thank you so much for listening and sharing this information with other parents who have teenage girls and yes, boys too. These things can help and how you're supporting them as well. So thank you. Welcome, everybody. Today's guest is Shantae McElvin, and she's located in Winter Garden, Florida. Shantae is often called a modern-day medicine woman, and she has been empowering women to tap into their inner wise woman for over 20 years. Shantae spent over half of her social work career empowering and teaching teen girls about mindfulness and the importance of sacred ritual. She now has a thriving intuitive coaching practice where she supports mostly women, awaken their authentic selves through archetypal awareness, energy medicine, and other shamanic healing methods. She recently founded Soul Care University, a distance learning and virtual healing center that focuses on one's soul nourishment and self-care through the sacred healing practices of natural therapy, mindfulness, and ritual. Shantae continues to teach mindfulness to teen girls and is working on an e-course called The Mindful Diva Meditation and Moonbeams for Teen Girls, which personally sounds really exciting. And Shantae brings folk healing to a modern world that desperately needs to slow down and reconnect to nature and cultivate self-compassion. I'm so excited to have you on today, Shantae, and have a conversation with you. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here too. Well, I would love it if you could tell our audience just a little more like, what does it mean to be kind of a modern day medicine woman? Tell us a little more about your practice. Oh, wow. So the practice um, was birthed out of working in the social work field, actually, and really connecting with my coworkers. And so I had some very unique um, methods of supporting myself, which contain things like, you know, classic meditation, but I also incorporated ritual. Um, and a lot of things that my grandmother taught me, um, living seasonally, really connecting with the earth on a very deep and spiritual level. And I incorporated all those things in my own self-care practice. And so by doing that, my coworkers began to ask me, what are you doing? And how are you staying so centered? And you always look like you can handle all the situations and you always do. And I began talking to them about what I was doing and how I was doing it. And it was them who started calling me a medicine woman. Um, I never gave that name to myself. It was other people who I supported would say, oh, you're such a little medicine woman. You have all these herbs always in your pouch or you're always pulling out something, you know, earthy or something magical. And so it gets kind of stuck and I used it. So now I just kind of call myself a modern day medicine woman because other people called me that simply because of how I seem to be this, this person who was in this modern day, mm -hmm. but brought this very old, ancient way of living and being and healing to the to the world. Oh, I love that. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so tell us a little more. You had talked about kind of the work that you have done with teen girls in the past regarding kind of the med meditations and just some of the herbal things or the herbal uses that you would have instead of like the, the normal kind of medical pills um, if people are kind of struggling maybe with anxiety or things like that. There's a, there's a time and place for that. 
but tell us a little more about kind of what you have done. And I know you work a lot more with women and moms now and supporting them, which really supports their teen girls. But tell us a little bit about that work you've done. Yeah. So I, I worked at a program, um, in 2000, I actually started, I determined that I needed my own adolescent inner adolescent healing. And only, I knew the only way to do that was to work with that particular population. So I started working with, um, teen girls in a program and I got so much out of this particular experience for my own healing. But what surprised me was how much the girls connected to how I was living. Mm -hmm. And I was living very mindfully. Um, I brought, you know, all of me to this particular program. And so they wanted to know, you know, who who is this black lady who talks this way and who dresses this way and who has all these things in her office that I've never seen but I'm, I'm drawn to. And I began to teach them about, uh, mindfulness and meditation. Um, I always had oils like burning in my office and, you know, what, what was the smell they were smelling? And soon I, I became that staff person in the program that they would go to that they knew um, I would have holistic things for them. So when they had cramps, you know, from their, their moon time, oh, my Shantae, you know, I'm having these cramps. Don't you have any tea today? I'd say, yes, I do. And I'd pull out this herbal tea and I'm like, yep, you can have some. And we talk about it. Or, um, Amashante, what do you have burning in here? It smells so good. And um, it's really helping me calm down. And I'd say, oh, well, that's lavender. And then we would talk about lavender. Or I began to teach them about meditation and teach them some of the other tools that I would use. Like I, I have oracle cards or I would teach them how to basically just tap into that inner world. And so I became that person on campus, not just for the staff, but also for the girls that began doing, you know, those psychoeducational groups that were mindfulness groups. And we would do meditation circles in the morning, or we would have, you know, something would go down on campus and we would all, you know, have a sacred circle where we'd sit and we'd talk and we'd share and we would kind of enter into that, that space where we were able to reflect and we would have moments of silence. And so all of that just kind of wove into my experience for 13 years. I did that. Um, and it, it was an amazing place that I was able to express myself in the most authentic way. And they were able to receive that in their soul. And so I think because I was there so long, I was able to see girls return as adults. Mm -hmm. So girls I'd work with at 15, you know, were now 21, would come back and see me. And they would tell me how much the things I had done with them impacted their lives, that they weren't able to necessarily implement it then. But as adults, they remembered about some of those those mindfulness strategies I'd taught them. And those were actually the, the golden parts of my experience in that program was to see that they were able to transfer that wisdom and internalize it and pull it out when they needed it. Because I used to always tell them that I'm just planting seeds. Mm -hmm. I'm just planting seeds that I know they're going to grow. And they couldn't see it then, but to come back when they're 21, 25 even, and to say, yes, they did. And I use this and I use that. And I remember when you told me this and, you know, now I am a vegetarian, if that was their path, or, you know, now I try to look for oils and you're the one that introduced those to me. <laughs> so it was really, it, it's really cool. So that's kind of been my work with them over those 13 years. And now it really is more of a, it's when those opportunities arise so someone, you know, wants me to do a workshop here or there, I'll kind of go do that with them. And sometimes it's volunteer and sometimes, you know, it's not. But I I have so much information, mm-hmm. I just want to share it. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of look for those, even though I'm, I'm mainly with women, I look for those opportunities where I can still engage and support um, my girls because they're such a huge piece of my life. Yeah. And it's, you know, there were so many beautiful things as you were talking about that experience. One, it was a journey for you to be with them, but 
so much of it, you also holding them and giving them Mm -hmm. that space to be seen and to be heard. And, you know, many of the episodes I have on here, we talk so much about, you know, our teenagers really wanting to to be seen and heard for where they are. And sometimes that can be very difficult um, in our world. So I love that they, as you said, yeah, you know, planting the seeds, they were able to come back at different times or some of the girls did and shared with you how you impacted them and what they learned during that time of their life that they are now using it as an adult, which is just lovely because that, that piece when the more they know themselves, the younger they are, right? Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. have less of a struggle than as an adult because Mm -hmm. you truly know yourself. So, ah, that's beautiful. Yes. Yes, it is. It is. That, um, that truly is what mindfulness how I have taught mindfulness for them and with them has always been just for them to be able to tap into who they are. I mean, to point, just, just point the, just point the way Yeah. and then accept them just as they are. Yeah. That's absolutely beautiful. So share then, let's turn it a little more than about the work that you're doing with the women. And sometimes it's with the moms Again, helping them get a little more connected to themselves. What does that look like? How do you how do you work with them? Because as you and I were kind of emailing back and forth, it's like mm-hmm. you, we know it's like if we can work with the parents sometimes that that automatically kind of trickles down into their kids and into with their daughters and things. So, what do you do now with the moms that really supports them, which then in, in indirectly supports their daughters? Yeah. So what's interesting is is my individual sessions are very, they're very customized. And because every one, every woman comes with a different story. Mm-hmm. And so kind of like how I knew that I was ready to heal these parts of myself, these, these my teenage, my adolescent was definitely calling out for some support, my inner adolescent. And so I knew that I needed to be around um, adolescents in order to bring and trigger those parts so that I can then process with my support. So it's, it's very similar. And when a woman shows up or mom shows up and she's saying that she's having some difficulties with her teenage girl, her, her actual teenage girl, that the work normally begins with her inner teen. Mm. And that is a range of ways in which we do that because I'm very alternative and I'm not a therapist. Sometimes it involves some parts work, um, working with the different archetypes and how that inner teen is expressing herself. Sometimes it is through energy medicine, which can be done through distance, through like remotely. Um, Sometimes it does involve herbal medicine, sacred herbal medicine. So not just the kind of herbal medicine that you might think of, oh, just let me get a capsule of this or that, but working with the plants themselves and making a bath or making an herbal blend that is affecting the vibration, um, almost the way like maybe flower essences work. So my work is very, it's varied Mm -hmm. with everyone. And, but those are just some examples of how I support moms now and women now. Well, and I love that too, what you were talking about, right? Really integrating those parts, because I totally agree. We've all got different parts within our own self or our own body. Mm -hmm. And when we don't understand it, or we try to push away a certain part or don't want to see or hear a certain part, then it Mm -hmm. makes the struggle more so. So yeah, yeah, if there's a certain part like the adolescent part that is getting triggered due to something that's going on between the the mom and daughter relationship... Mm -hmm then being able to explore that and to have compassion with that and have a better understanding really begins to work with the external struggle because the internal struggle is being dealt with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, would you mind sharing a little more about really how you do use the the herbs or essential oils that as you you gave some examples when you were doing the teen girl groups like sometimes it's the herbal teas to help Mm -hmm. women um you know that time of the month for them or what are ways that you really help or use you know the herbs or the essential oils that kind of help manage sometimes moods or just kind of give them the, the support that they're needing at that time in their life right so i guess it's really important to honor how I work with 
um, sacred herbal medicine. And so for me, it is about the relationship. So everything for me is about the relationship. And to experience um, herbal medicine as a going to the general health food store and looking for the bottle that says passion flower or skull cap or whatever it is, and then taking that pill three times a day or suggesting to someone, oh yes, just take these herbal capsules three times a day to manage your teenager's nerves or anxiety or things like that will be very dishonoring in my in my way, very dishonoring to the herb itself Mm -hmm. and dishonoring to the, the land. So my way is to first develop a relationship. So even before suggesting herbal medicine to someone like it was with the girls that she would ask, Oh, do you have a tea? Yes, I do. I would give her the tea and she would drink it. And then we would talk about it as she's kind of sipping it. Mm -hmm. So she began to develop this relationship. And that is how I work with herbal medicine. It's about introducing someone to a plant. And let's see how this particular plant connects with you and how you connect with it. There's a personality to this plant and this plant is choosing you. And it's choosing to work. There's dozens of herbs for ner- for the nervous system. So which one is for you? Well, everyone has a philosophy of how they're going to do that. And for me, it's about the connection mm-hmm. and connecting with that particular plant. So, so one way of suggesting is, you know, we sit and we talk or whether we're remotely, we sit and we talk. And I have a very special relationship. So herbs kind of show up in my mind's eye. Um, it's very kind of psychic in a way, if you want to say it that way. It's very intuitive. Herbs kind of start showing up in my mind that will be supportive of this person. And so as we're talking, those particular plants may be suggesting things through my intuitive self. And so I'll make those suggestions to the person I'm talking to. I might show them where to go to get it, direct them to where they can go to get it. And my best way is always through an herbal tea first Mm. because it's very gentle it's very mild and it's uh, very non-harming when it's done as an herbal tea in which you can smell it you can taste it you can begin to enter into that relationship by having that mindful cup of tea and then from there we know we see well how how does it feel And how is this working with you? And what do you notice? And so it's much more of a journey, the herbal medicine that I suggest, much more of a journey than kind of like a directive. Yeah. Even to bathing in them or to using even essential oils, you know, just smelling them. And there's hundreds of essential oils (laughs) because there's, you know, thousands of plants and thousands and thousands of plants. And so... You know, even with that, it's it can still be done in a way that's very honoring and sacred and not a, a prescription, if that makes sense. Totally makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I love the way that you, your philosophy about it is all about the relationships. It's the connection. And that's, you know, really what all of this work is about, right? Yeah, So it's absolutely. not just relationship from person to person. It's also the relationship you have with yourself. It's the relationship, as you're talking about having with the plants, everything that you're know you nourishing your body with, it's all Mm -hmm. about about that. So, and I love how how you really begin it really with the teas so that kind of see how that works with the um, the individual person Mm -hmm. and how their body responds to it. And, oh, that's really nice. Oh, thank you. That's that's how I learned. Yeah. Um, I and that's how I practice, and um, with it, and that's how I teach. Mm-hmm. So I did want to mention a couple of books that, for those who are really interested in getting into learning about how herbs can support them. Yes. Um, because it's really important. And I'll just say that you don't look online mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're starting out because it's very fear based. Yeah. And it's, in my opinion, quite clinical. And so the type of herbal medicine I'm speaking of is the kind that's much more folk healing, uh, much more mindfulness, much more feminist based, actually. And so one author is Rosemary Gladstar. She's not just an author. She's an herbalist, um, one of our pioneers. Um, She has a great book called The Family Herbal. It has a whole chapter 
on the nervous system and natural and holistic ways to support the nervous system down to where to find your herbs and how to make different herbal blends, how to make herbal syrups, bathe in them. It's a really great comprehensive chapter on the nervous system and you really get a great understanding of how your herbal allies can support you. So that's one. And the other um, author or the other herbalist I'm thinking about is Gail Faith Edwards. And she has a beautiful book um, called Opening Your Wild Heart to the Healing Herbs. Just a really great, takes one herb at a time and really talks about a lot of the folklore and the history behind the herbs. And she gives lots of suggestions of what it's for. There are There is a part in her book where she shows like how to make a basic tea, how to make a basic syrup, things like that. Mm-hmm. But it's just how the information is presented is very honoring of the process of herbal medicine and how it's more than just take this capsule, you know, take this. It's very honoring of mindfulness, very honoring of the process of the relationship building. So I wanted to bring those both out. Well, thank you for those resources. You're welcome. Yeah, I'll definitely have those on the show notes um, for folks who are driving and all of that. So those are, they sound wonderful. Can't wait to check yeah. them out. Mm-hmm. They're really good. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you sometimes recommend? Maybe it's in between the sessions, whether it's a, a different book or a different piece of advice that you recommend for sometimes either the, the mom or the woman that is being, that is working with you to how to support them kind of in between the time that they are with you? Yeah, I usually, you know, I'm a big bath person. Um, it's very old school, I know, <laughs> but I grew up with my mother Um, taking baths. And I also grew up with my mother um, soaking her feet. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just one of those things. And so I, and water in general, is that element of of healing and reconciliation. And so when we take a bath, whether it's our whole body or just our feet, we are inviting a spirit of reconciliation Mm. into our vibration. And so Taking a bath, not a bath to like wash yourself or to clean yourself, but a a soak to uh, nourish your soul is so healing. And then if you go to the store and you get a basic, you know, celestial seasonings or Tazo tea or any of your favorite, you know, herbal tea blend, that just smells good. It doesn't Mm -hmm. even, you don't have to worry about, oh, is this going to be right? Because our nose picks up so much stuff and just something smelling good can make us feel better. Yeah. And put a few bath, put a few tea bags in your bath water and just soak and just be, you know, do that meditation time, do those three centering breaths, you know, practice those techniques that you learn in mindfulness class or mindfulness group in that bath. And you have just, um, created a little ritual for yourself. Yeah. That is absolutely amazing and can take you so far. Definitely. That sounds very lovely. I'm sitting there imagining that and like, oh, I've got some favorite teas I could definitely put in the bath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's a really great way to introduce and again, begin to build those relationships with those um, herbal allies, as well as to invite some me time. Yeah. yeah. Um. Because usually when, I know for me, when the door is closed, you know, my my teenage knows and my other one knows, you know, okay, mom's taking some time to herself. We just don't bother her. Yep. And I think that's so important, that self-care piece of it for all moms and and dads that are out listening to this, that you do have to have some me time. You have to have that time just to reconnect with yourself and get recentered and... It's also role modeling that to your kids then when you do that, that it's like, hey, you know, yep, I'm still your parent and I love you. And at the same time, I also have to Mm -hmm. love myself so that I can also be there for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Lovely. Well, I am really curious if you would mind, wouldn't mind sharing how can people that are listening today, how could they get a hold of you or what's the best way for them to, to find you, your website or Facebook or? Probably my website, um, the Shantae.com website um, has several different you know pages on there where you can learn about what I'm doing. And there's some articles. I have a blog on there. You can reach out through the contact 
page. It's probably the best way to learn about me and what I'm doing and to get a hold of me. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. And again, I will have that on the show notes as well. So the spelling and the link and all of that will be there for sure. And is that how people also find out more about your Soul Care University? Is that on your website as well? It is. Okay. Yep. The Soul Care University is on the website. It explains what that is. Um, there's also the Soul Care you, um, dot com, okay. which is, it's a kind of a sister site, but they can definitely explore what's going on um, in the Soul Care University. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, she's, she's still so new. She's like, you know, that new baby that mm-hmm. I'm still kind of holding tight there. <laughs> yep. And not like, oh, do I, do I really want to introduce her just yet? <laughs> so, yes, thank you for bringing that up um, because those e-courses and programs will be coming little by little. Mm-hmm. I'm working on that. Um, the one that is for teenage girls, that's going to be how I feel like I can support them the most. I feel like I have a really unique way because I worked with them for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a way to share mindfulness with teenage girls. Yeah. There's a, there's a terminology and there's a flavor and I feel like I have that flavor Mm -hmm. and that would really support them. So that'll be coming up sooner than later. Um, but there's a couple of things on there now that would probably be very supportive um, to some people. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Shante, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on today and sharing more about what you have done and what you currently are doing and what is available for all of our listeners um, that are out there. Uh, really just totally appreciate you taking the time and sharing your wisdom with all of us. Thank you. You are so welcome. I, it, was, it was great chatting with you. I invite you to go out to launchingyourdaughter.com and sign up for the newsletter. I've got a local teen girl group that I'm starting here, and I'm looking at beginning something online for the mothers of teenage girls. So sign up for the newsletter to to stay up to date with what's going on and how I can best support your needs. Thank you for listening to Launching Your Daughter with Nicole Burgess, Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. For more information or to stay up to date, go to launchingyourdaughter.com. You can sign up for my email list or join my Facebook group. Thank you.